Welcome to round number five of the High Tech Oil Super Series here from Sydney Motorsport Park. We are just 40 kilometres out of the CBD of Sydney. Can you believe it? Unbelievable track here. It's the penultimate round two as we head in. A lot of championship implications coming out of this one. I'm Matty Kavanagh and Stephen White. How good is it going to be under lights tonight? Oh, it's an exciting place to, to be at Sydney Motorsport Park. And uh, it's fantastic here with the venue, the lights, the crowd, the atmosphere. What else can you say? But what a great category. We're behind us here, TA2, and a great roll-up of categories to complete the night for us. And with 26 TA2 muscle cars here this weekend, they've really rumbled around Sydney Motorsport Park, haven't they? There's 11 turns to get around, 3.93 kilometres. They've done it in style, but the man to talk about is Jordan Cox in the Crutcher Mobile. Well, what can you say? We thought we couldn't improve on Mark Crutcher, but here we are, Jordan Cox behind us there, who's done an absolutely superlative job this weekend. Fast everywhere, fast in the top ten, fast in all the races, so you can't ask much more for that. We've also got the Legend Cars Australia presented by Yamalu. We've got the EFS Australian Hyundai Excel Series for the second time as well, so great to have them here at Sydney Motorsport Park. We've got the Australian Trans Ams. We've got a huge night of racing, goes all the way through to about 10 o'clock tonight. Yeah, magnificent, and every field is stacked full of various opportunities for people to win. You know, there's nothing that's a lay-down misere until we start the race, so can't wait for tonight's action. It's going to be fantastic, Matty. No, we're all here at Sydney. The crowd has rolled in. We can't wait for the action to get underway. The sun is going down. The lights are about to get lit up here at Sydney Motorsport Park. Let's head to the action. The legend cars always put on their show and there's got to be something just a little bit to sparky in these cars, a little bit mental. One of those guys returning to the 2023 season who loves to hold a flat around turn number one, Nathan Prito. Welcome back. Thanks, Matty. It's good to be back. It's our uh, first time out on the track all year and just uh, practice one, getting used to the car again, and then practice two, we, we had a, a couple of little issues there, but um, we're sorting that out now and ready for qualifying. Look, for people who want to get involved, I mean, you yourself have done various forms of motorsport. What would you tell people if they want to get into the sport? What's it like? Look, legend cars are a great great thing to start off with as well. You know, they're, they're pretty cheap to run and cheap to buy. You know, so legend cars is a great way to get yourself in, invested in, in the motorsport scene. And, you know, you can grow from there, different categories. As you see here, there's, you know, a heap of categories at this event, which is, you know, such a great thing that High Tech Oils is putting on. And, you know, legend cars is great. If it costs you 10 grand for the season, you're doing something wrong. So, um, mate, if you want to jump on legend cars, uh, Australia, have a look, talk to John, talk to Tony Ward. Best way to get involved in these ones. Well, we know you don't mind burning a bit of rubber. We can't wait to see you out there this weekend. Yeah, thanks very much, buddy. Appreciate it. On to the grids for the Legend Cars Australia. Race number four, Shane Tate starting off the pole. Ryan Bring from two. Back to Brendan Hurrigan out of position three. Scott Morgan from four. Second of the Hurrigan boys, five. Josh Hur uh, Out of five will be Josh Hurrigan. And uh, out of the 10, Matthew Bond, Hardy Martin out of 12, Chris Spicer out of the 13, Darren Bradley from 14, Sean Cartwright from 15, Justin Mitchell from 16, and uh, again, another big lineup here at Sydney Motorsport Park for the Legend Cars Australia. Fourth race of the weekend. Yeah, of course, they got five races. They do a, a, a couple of uh, lap conde uh, condense them a little bit to only eight laps for these little cars. Super exciting to watch. Rolling start about to get underway. Shane Tate and Ryan Pring are on the front row after coming one, two in the race number three a little bit earlier today. A couple of different engine combinations down these cars. We've got the slightly smaller 900 uh, water-cooled engines compared to the 1250s that are air-cooled. We thought there might be a few differences in the heat, but Ryan Pring, I know he's got the older motor on board. You can't see the radiator. Fantastic job the Australian champion from last year and they will take that down to Calder Park Raceway as they go five wide into turn oh, number one. Oh, I reckon it might have been six. I think it might have been oh. close to six. Yeah, no, five was good. Six was better. They're definitely three and four wide still coming down through on the approach to two. They are everywhere like a group of buzzing bees. <laughs> oh, contact. Oh, it's the 26 going around McKay. Oh, miss him, miss him. They did. Oh, that now is now seriously he's putting on a burnout display. Oh, that is one of the worst positions to be. Unfortunately, there was contact. I missed who it was. I think it might have been. It was definitely a white car. <laughs> I, I think. Again, just like Morgan Park, we've seen some sensational racing from these cars all the way through the field, and this will be a pretty. Big oh, race track big for move. these cars. Big move under brakes. Hurrigan, can he get oh, it done? They're going, three the wide. Inside. they're going three wide for the lead. It's Hurrigan and Hurrigan. 
They're either side of the Zinna Hurrigan sandwich. Oh, was that the pair? It was <laughs> yeah. two. The two was to the outside. Yeah. The one and the two. Oh. And the 28 in amongst that one. That was a three-way battle. Three wide into turn two for the race. Tate gets him back, though. Out of uh, three on the run to four and five. He's back into the front in that little coop up against the sedan and the 28 who's been working his way forward all throughout the weekend. Fastest first sector split to the triple three of Ryan Pring. He's worked his way back up to four, so he's picked up a couple of spots. He was sixth on the first lap. Pring now covers off and it looks like right behind him, Scotty Morgan's now going to go to the right hand side. What are they going to do? Will it be a hurricane sandwich again here for Scotty Tate? Just got the nose in front though. Brendan down Brendan. the inside, but Tate just drove back around him. And we're going to go three wide again under brakes here. Wow, look behind. We're going to try. Pring's getting covered off. Oh, the 16 of Morgan locked a break and came from a long way back, trying to get to that leading pack of three. And Pring's right there in that dark black and green triple three as well. And again, it's the same names, the familiar names that we've talked about over the coverage going back to Morgan Park that are at the top of the sheets here at the moment. Wow, how wide. As this is where Tate seems to be a little bit better on the run out of two and three. Be careful, though. They not quite uh, closed wheel cars. They do stand, they do hang out a little bit. And I would have get caught up on those front and rear nerf bars on these cars before. Yeah, that's definitely a speedway sort of style deal. That one is the Morgan 16 to the inside of the two. Oh, There's no. contact. Morgan's going backwards. I think that might have been Pring. No, Pring got through with it. It was the two. One of the Hurrigan boys was going backwards at the same time, and I think it was the contact between that uh, those two. Well, D you could Duckworth sort of got involved in the end. Yeah, you could sort of see that coming as Tate and the other Hurrigan go at it for the lead side by side through eight. Hurrigan in the 28, big time sideways mid corner. I'm pretty sure that. Oh, that not, was ugly. He did not see Scotty Morgan coming down the inside on that dive. I reckon you'll see that. It was um, it was Josh Hurrigan who just thought he had a clear inside run. Came down the inside. Scotty Morgan's there. They make contact. Unfortunately, it looks like Duckworth may have got involved in that one as well, just trying to evade making some contact. So he's the one sixty back though. He so no, it's right. out too much. He's seventh. Then again, in the eighty-six, just up ahead. So here we go. Oh. No, wow. he did see him. He was right it alongside was... of him. They just made a bit of contact. Like I say, the wheels aren't enclosed. Very easy to oh, touch. Oh, there were some eyes wide open with the guys in behind them. Nice well, they've definitely gained, they through. They've definitely gained out of that deal the previous lap with that contact as uh, Bring just dropped. Was that we know they can do they can do both bitchman and was the third race. Oh, oh no, big fire. I'm fire, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> yeah, no, that is a big fire that too. Is that is actually too. Not, a, not a good Mark, deal. Mark Duckworth, hopefully he can get over. Tight cars too. Want to get out of that very, very quickly. We yeah, don't like probably, cars he doesn't coming. even want to go to the grass. He just wants to get out of that. I don't, thing, I don't so. blame him there, and I'm sure that will bring on a safety car. Yeah. It will have to. Absolutely. I don't know how classy, what, uh, close he was to one of the marshals, but like, uh, the, the, well, so we've got yellows and safety car boards and all sorts coming out here, but... Look, we're all thinking about that driver. That was a big onboard fire, and yeah. he didn't even attempt to get off the track. That was just stopping on the racetrack. Oh, he's out. He's out of the good. car. That That's is Duckworth. Good, ladies and gentlemen. That's Mark Duckworth in the 10. So he's out of the car. That was the first concern, because obviously that fire was getting pretty vicious inside the cockpit because he just stopped. But yeah, unfortunately, that's going to be a lot of damage to that race car, and it's still burning out there. So we are on full yeah. safety car. We've got the safety crew now. They've pretty much come from probably pit lane. Yeah. That is a big fire. That looks fire. like a real fire. That, that is a big to keep fire. It like that. All right, so it looks like the chequered flag is going to be pulled here. Yeah. I think they com definitely completed five of the eight. So, you know, they got the majority of the race. And, yeah, I don't think our tickers would have survived much longer if we had another three laps to go with us. Wow, look at the damage. Yeah, that, that was like, an intense fire, though. That has just melted the Perspex screen. You would, yeah, it was a big fire. So whether, whether it was going on for quite a bit of time, you could see him rolling around. He obviously knew there was something wrong, but then it really engulfed the car. So your Legend Cars Australia, supported by Yamaloo, race number four, Shane Tate will take the win over Brendan Hurrigan and Ryan Pring, your top three. Then it's Ben Goodridge, Nathan Preto will end up fifth. Billy Finnegan, the Irishman, in sixth. Then it's Hardy Martin, seventh. Bruce Duckworth. In eighth, Scotty Morgan in ninth, and Matty Bond will round out your top ten. A very exciting race from the Legend Cars. We went back to Scott O'Keefe in 11th, and it was Darren Bradley, Justin Mitchell, Cody McKay, Daniel Fitzpatrick, Chris Spicer, Sean Cartwright, 
Mark Duckworth, unfortunately, we did see a lot of flame coming out of that car. And uh, then we go back to Josh Hurrigan and Stuart Bond for the 20. But yeah, Mark Duckworth, look, we uh, are so glad we saw him get out of the car. He took the safety gear off. He was walking around. He looked, he looked like he was OK. So we, we hope everything is down there is A-OK -okay for Mark Duckworth. And um, look, cars are repairable. A fantastic venue here. We're just 40 kilometres out of the CBD of Sydney. Can you believe that? Such a big epicentre of population and we're, and we're right here at this fantastic facility but it's Trans Am's out on track as they go around and do their formation lap. We see our Yellow Express safety car starting to leave the pack. Sean English will be dominant all weekend so far with all those number ones in the Davcat heavy haulage entry there. Ian Palmer, he had to work his way back through the field after the incident earlier on with John Prefontaine. Alwyn Bishop in that beautiful green duster. I hope the sun goes down during this race because I want to see that thing under lights. John Prefontaine obviously strong in the Mustang as well. And Dean Crosley, well, that Falcon Sprint, we, we're still uh, trying to figure out exactly where that two-door came from. I'm pretty sure it's South African because it is a yeah. two-door 1970-ish Falcon, so it is a little bit on the rear side. So, yep, Mustang's got the beautiful Mercury Cougar out there with Len Balm, and the sun is setting. Beautiful sunny conditions here early in the evening at Sydney Motorsport Park, and it is Sean English that will lead them away on lap number one for the Australian Trans Am finale here at SMP. And, is Trisha Chant going through in the 35. That's one of the five leader class cars. The race being led by one of the five leader class cars. And across the field, we have five and six leader. Weight difference and horsepower being the main differences between the two styles of cars. Ian Palmer slots in the second position. Alan Bishop behind him in the Plymouth Duster. Then it's John Prefontaine. I'm sure they'll have a great battle. I asked him, how was that tyre from the previous race? He had a massive brake lock. It would have been like a 50 cent piece. But he's back out there. He looked pretty keen to get this race done this afternoon. The top four have sort of shot away here at the moment. Dean Crosley, then Andy Clemson, who's come up from Victoria, then in the number 75 Mustang, doing a fantastic job just at the back. Oh, Prefontaine locked up again. He just locked up, and Alan Bishop's managed to get around him. So these two will continue the battle that we saw earlier on this afternoon for that battle for third and fourth. And Palmer came through the field from the back of the field. He and Prefontaine actually got together in the second race earlier on this morning. A little bit of damage to the right front of the Palmer Trans Am. You can just see some race take there and a little bit of a, a sad face drawn on there. He wasn't real happy about it, but you can see the dent in the side of the Owen Bishop car too. Well, unfortunately, that was courtesy of Prefontaine. And the irony there is it's actually a Palmer Steel industry sign that he's hit on the side of Alwyn <laughs> Bishop's car. So he's got a two-for-one bargain earlier on today. If you had seen this car about 18 months ago, it looked like it had come out of a junkyard. A huge crash. There was not a lot left of the Palmer Firebird. As or oh, Shawnee English is going to try the long way around. He's just found where that understeer limit is on the outside of the circuit. But he's not giving this one up. He's making a race for it. Yeah, the Pontiac's wide enough already, but he managed to really close the width of the track down there for Sean English. He thought he was going to come around and do the undercut, but Palmer's just held on there. Kept on the inside line, really held him up for just a moment. That's uh, it's a pretty special paint job in the, the inside of the engine bay of that car, which happens when you get a, a, paint, a painter friend who uh, you may frequent his shed at night time and you get some silly ideas, I suppose, as the sun goes down and you think, no, we're going to... It's a little bit too flash. Prefontaine, yeah, just looks like a jewellery box underneath the hood. Prefontaine with an inside run here at Alan Bishop. I asked Alan about the duster after the previous race. I said, did you overheat the rear tyres? And he just looked at me and grinned. So I'll take that as a yes. Still side by side, the uh, six litre advantage of the big Mopar, 340 cubic inches. Just getting the ascendancy there and Prefontaine's on the outside line on the approach to eight. Not that that'll stop him trying to go around the outside. Is there a brake lock up before as well? We saw a little bit of tyre smoke. Oh, Prefontaine's really battling to keep that car straight. And here's Crossley, uh, sorry, uh, Clemson on a fresh tyre. That's Crossley in behind in that unique two door Falcon. Down through the shadows, Clemson. He's not going to get the move done this time on Alwyn Bishop. Prefontaine just in the background. Doesn't know what he's going to do. Back oh, up to English. the battle for the lead. English on the outside. He's going to try and go the long way around. That's brave. You can see Ian is definitely struggling down the inside with that understeer. English ran wide off the exit. That sucked a little bit of exit speed out of it. They're still side by side. This is game on with a lap and a half to go at SMP for the Australian Trans Am. 
How important was the clean sweep for Sean English? I think maybe that just uh, put a little exclamation mark on it. He is very, very motivated for the clean sweep, judging by that driving wow. display. How good was that to just take the risk on eight? He's been watching him for a number of laps. He's just put the nose in on a few corners, tried a few different things. Palmer was coming back at him in a straight line, though, as this battle for third, fourth and fifth rages in behind them. As Palmer, has he got an inside run back down the inside of English? Yes, ish. Yes, he has. English will try the crossover, maybe under brakes. Palmer's going to have to run narrow and defend because this is the final lap of the Australian Trans Ams and uh, arguably probably the best race of the weekend. Oh, it definitely is. We've got a battle on for first position, a battle on for third going out just behind that. Oh, can he get it, English? He might have to look at the same moment. I'm sure Ian Palmer will be checking the mirrors. He won't want to let him do that same move twice. Unfortunately, down the straight, Ian Palmer just has the horsepower and gets the legs in the Pontiac. Oh, no, I was going to say... They pa both slide it. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, Palmer's sideways. It was going to turn into... They were both sideways. Absolutely oh. sideways. They are both trying hard. Like, Ian Palmer's done a lot of racing over a lot of years, and he's done a lot of that racing against John English, which is Sean's dad's. A dad in a, in a similar Good. car to this and uh, it's disappointing not to have John out there as part of this battle because this is really cool to watch. Well, Ian Palmer, I think he has run out of tyres as well. English now on the outside and he's holding on to it too. He's going to have another oh, go. He's just clipped the rear the bumper. The car, locks he's, the brakes up. He's clipped the rear bumper and there's understeer from English. Exit oversteer. It's got a bruise on the right front of the guard as he just sort of wiped across the back of the Trans Am. The Trans Am holds on to the lead but Hey, uh, this is a pretty good race to conclude the weekend for the Australian Trans Ams here at Sydney Motorsport Park and part of the High Tech Super Series. This is definitely not over. Sean English, I, he's going to get killed in a straight line. Like, the, the big six leader should drive away as they come down to the chequered flag entertainment. Plus, Ian Palmer denies Sean English the clean sweep for the weekend, but gets his first win finally. He'll win the six-litre class in the final. Here's the battle for third. This is not over either. Clemson's fallen out somewhere here. Yeah, Clemson's dropped back in behind Prefontaine, so it'll be Alwyn Bishop in third in the six-litre Plymouth Duster for the Mopar fans. So you've got a Pontiac winning from a Ford with a Mopar in third. Yeah, it definitely was a great race here from the Trans Am. The Australian Trans Ams, it's race number four for them. Great to see them make their way down from Queensland where they have been super dominant. A couple of Victorians in the mix here. Ian Palmer got the win this time over Sean English. So not quite a clean sweep for Sean, but he should get the round win. Alwyn Bishop in third place in the Plymouth Duster. Then back to John Prefontaine, Andrew Clemson from Victoria, Dean Crosley, Trisha Chan. Len Balm and Gareth Jones to round out the nine cars who made it out on track. We're here, the lights are bright here at City Motorsport Park, and we've still got plenty of action to come your way right after this break. It's going to be the Yellow Express RX8 Cup. Fresh off some endurance racing at Bathurst, Jalen Robotham joins us for the EFS Australian Hyundai XL Series here at Sydney Motorsport Park. Welcome, mate. You got a big smile on your face, look like having fun out there. Yeah, uh, always fun in the XL. Um, you know, we had a practice session then, and we're running three wide down the straight, and bump drafting, all the all the fun stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's cool to be at SMP. Uh, thanks to B Pro uh, for having me this weekend, and, and TPS uh, set the car up. Hopefully, we have a good weekend round two of the newly formed Australian series. Obviously you're up at Queensland Raceway as well. How are you finding the competition so far? Our competition is really good. Um, yeah, I think I've set second in the championship. Uh, it's tied up the front. Um, it's, yeah, like the front the front pack, it's, we're all very similar pace. Um, it's just, you know, who can outsmart the other one and, and, and get in front of, across the finish line. But um, yeah, you know, we're working hard, um, trying to get a good car for quality and hopefully we can put it towards the front. Um, but if not, you know, it'll be fun racing no matter the less, so yeah. How many wide do you think you can go into turn one? Let's tell us the truth. Easily four or five, but I don't think all of them are making it through. So it's um, it's pretty wide going into one and then it kind of tightens up through the corner. But um, yeah, we've run two or three wide here a couple of times through one, so yeah, it's been pretty fun. We can't wait to see the racing this weekend. Glad you got a big smile on your face and uh, good luck. Thank you, cheers. Welcome back to round number five of the High Tech Oils Super Series. We're down to the last couple of races here this evening. As we go to the grid for race number four. 
Tyler Collins will lead us out with Jalen Rowe Botham alongside him in position number two. Rhino Sullivan, Jack Wood will take up the second row. And it's Blake Tracy and Toby Waghorn. Hugo Simpson will be alongside George Wood and Jackson Faulkner alongside Dale Carpenter out of Victoria in the fifth row. And we'll start him off out of 11 will be Harry Tompkins and it's Jacob Curry from South Australia joining us for the first time in the series. Caleb Patterson alongside in 13, Preston Bruce, John Marwick in 15, Liam Hall, Josh Trafford, uh, William Wallace, Tyler Cheney's there, and uh, Donny Marjavac. Let's hope they all make it out. Trevor Lansdowne, Joshua Richards, and Edwards Mitchell. Well, Edwards Mitchell's had some dramas this weekend. A piston went missing on on Friday. Oh. We only have a couple of categories that have a standing still start here at the High Tech Girls Super Series. And the Excels are one of those. Now, last time, Jalen Robotham didn't get a great start, and that's where Tyler Collins got away. Robotham got caught up, went back two or three positions. Oh, he was back in fifth. Yeah. And then he had to get through the fight of all the drivers. Ryan O'Sullivan's another one we need to talk about. He actually got a five-second penalty from the start. For a jump start. That actually got Negated. reversed. Yeah. yeah, which doesn't happen very often, but they looked at the footage post-race. It was a five-second penalty, and actually a judge, he did not jump the start. So, look, that, I think that's just common sense, and that's how it should work, rather than just making the decision and having it stick as we go racing. Oh, oh Collins. Collins. Devastating. He's down two, three, four positions. They're he, all going past him. Tracy now. It almost looked like he just clean missed the start because oh. Jalen Robotham got a flyer and uh, the 77, Tyler Collins, was just left there on the grid and got away late. Well, the LEDs are on under some of the cars and they, they light them up here. Jalen Robotham on the inside, but on the outside, O'Sullivan now and Tyler Collins sends it in and he goes wide under brakes, drops back another three or four positions. Oh, now he's down on the track. dirt. Bounce oh, just as well. They rejoin. Oh, you never know what's going to happen when that. Oh, oh, when they rejoin, you just never Matt, know. Matt just about fell out of the commentary box. So Toby Sullivan I leads. Don't, I don't know how that didn't end up worse. Oh, O'Sullivan leads the 2022 Series champion. And uh, wow, that was an exciting first few corners. And now maybe things just settle down a touch. But I did say, like, over half an hour, you got a little bit more time to work. They've only got eight laps here. It's, so, and it's the last one of the weekend. And it's the last one of the weekend. So I think there might be a few, few brains thrown out the window here and uh, just get to the front and don't worry about who you run over. No, Ideally, just, that's not what we want. Blake Tracy was trying to get around the outside of Jalen Robotham. For me, Jalen Robotham's tall. Oh, there was take, contact. Oh, Jack Wood. We were just on board and came off and Jack Wood was actually out of control to the outside of the, the 195 and, and has got the pass down the inside. But I would say there was a fair amount of seesawing going on the wheel with the 15 Castrol machine as Collins tries to regroup. But he's got some very, very fast cars around him. The 117 of Hugo Simpson. He's been in the mix all through the weekend. And how cool does the chrome green look under lights? Oh, it looks absolutely fantastic from Hugo Simpson. We always knew it would during the day, even, even under the, the sunlight in certain areas. Here we go. We get on board, though, with Blake Tracy. He's going to try and draft him down the straight. We hear him go by. Oh, he's going to get this done. He's in fourth position. It's Wood out in front. This is only getting into the first lap. <laughs> We've still got seven to go. Crikey. All right, so O'Sullivan with a little bit of a gap. Whoa, right the, oh, that was uh, oh, George, whoa, Wood. George Wood. Collins is going backwards. Carpenter's in there in the triple Jayden. one. The 33, I think he might have just copped the touch, and there are cars littered everywhere on the run down to two. Oh, There's tyre oh, smoke. I, I didn't, I'm not going to say it, but I think that vehicle is coming out for a visit. So here's, Collins has gone sideways there. So there's Wood to the inside. Oh, Collins. So Wood's to the outside. He fires across the front. Look at Carpenter. He's gone nose to nose with him. Oh! Imagine the view in there. That's what's finished him off. Yeah. Richards, just with nowhere to go, wrong oh. place, wrong time. Was that... Was that the 77 backwards up against the fence as well? So look look where Wood comes from. The outside of the track goes across the front and bang. Oh, that's a touch down there. So as Collins, well, the bottom is, right. Collins is down there. That was Richards going by and just collecting the rear of Wood and finished him off and planted it in the concrete. Uh, there's the sad side of the 12 of uh, George Wood getting towed off onto one of the flat decks here. So we'll look to get a restart here. This this may be a one lap dash to the end of this one as well, because boy, did that uh, 
opening lap go off. We're Single file restart. We're going back How racing. much carnage can we have and how many laps do we have left? And we know because the uh, the Yarra safety car has streaked off down onto pit lane, lights off, and it is gone. And we are going back green. Rhino Sullivan to lead them away. And this is another one lap dash to the finish. Well, if the start was exciting enough, uh, hang on for the finish. Here we go, Dale Ray Malcolm on the outside. He's drafted him down. Steps out to the right-hand side. Oh, we're going to go gonna three. Wood as well. We're going to go three, trying to go three wide. Jack Wood in there in the uh, second of the Castrol team cars. That one's a little bit straighter than the other one. Row Botham to the outside, trying to force the issue with O'Sullivan. We've got the 195 in there as well. A Blake Tracy, and we go on board. There's contact into the back of Wood. Down through two, you cannot get any closer than we have got on here now. And they all know it's a one lap dash to the end. And look at the skies in the background here at Sydney Motorsport Park. They come over the hill as they head down into turn number four. They need to slide the cars through here, get it nice and flowing. Goes up over the crest change the weight of the car, shift it over to the right-hand side. Yeah, Wood, I thought he was alongside him there, but he's actually dropped back in behind Robotham. He's trying to get to the back of O'Sullivan. It's going to have to be a pretty big move, but Tracy's looking very racy back there in third. I did not mean to rhyme that. Jack Wood back there in the fourth position, and in fifth will be uh, Waghorn in the 84 as we're back on board with Tracy. Robotham is trying everything to try and get to O'Sullivan, the defending series champion champion for the EFSL, EFS XL Series. There we go, Jacob Curry also in the mix here in the 27 from South Australia. <laughs> He's seen all the chaos happening around him. We go, what am I doing over here in New South Wales? Great to have him here. Hopefully we will see him at Calder Park as well. Is he, you know, obviously the third round of the Australian titles. Hopefully he's had a great time here as part of the High Tech All Super Series. Oh, a little oh, mistake. Look up the corners, oh, down on the front right. Little mistake from O'Sullivan. Had a little wiggle and robe on them's eyes lit back up as Bruce looks to go down the inside. They're going to drag race down to the line. I think O'Sullivan's going to hold on to it. There's there's nothing in it. He goes down to the inside to cover. Robotham to the outside. He is going to run out, or is he? It's going to be close. I saw Five get it. one hundredths of a second. Five one hundredths. I didn't think he had enough. I mean, it wasn't enough in the end, but he only just came up short by probably a front guard. Let's have a look at how it all ended for race number four here in the Australian XL Series, all thanks to EFS Australia. Four by four. Ryan O'Sullivan got that win just over Jalen Robotham. Look at that, five hundredths of a second. Blake Tracy just behind. Jack Wood dropped back into fourth after the restart. Toby Waghorn in fifth out of Victoria. Hugo Simpson in sixth in Dale Carpenter. Jacob Curry, Harry Tompkins and Caleb Patterson around out the top ten for race number four here at Sydney Motorsport Park. Then it was Bruce Collins, Trafford, Faulkner, Hall, Mitchell, Marwick, Markwick, Wallace, Cheney and Marjavik who came in 20th position. I mean, there's not a lot of time between all, but obviously it was a one-lap restart as well. For the first time in the Yellow Express RXA Cup is Mitch Brooks, mate. You look a little bit nervous this weekend coming into Sydney. Yeah, feeling it, feeling a bit nervous. Uh, just wanted to get in the car, give it a crack. No, I think once I'm in the seat, it'll be a bit better. Usually you're behind the spanners working on these circuit cars. What is the difference in attitude coming into this weekend? Um, more so instead of fixing it when it breaks, just don't break it. So that means I don't have to fix it then. So. The less I can be on the spanners, the better. Now look, Maisy Place obviously has a great little workshop of RX-8 cars. You've had the opportunity to get into this one. Um, how did that come about? So just between racing and Adam Burgess knowing, knowing Macy just been able to get in the car. They've been sort of asking for a long time to get us in there, so now it's finally the time to do it, I think. No time like the present. Look, mate, you got a fresh cut for the weekend. Take the hat off. Show, show us what we've done for the weekend. Not, not much, just a little bit off the top. Keep the back a bit, so... See how it is. Hopefully it brings some luck. I don't know. See how we go. Well, good luck. We hope you enjoy the RX-8. Thank you. Thank you. And we have got the Yellow Express RX-8 Cup Series out on track. They've got two rounds left after this one. One a couple of weeks back here at Sydney Motorsport Park. Followed by Calder Park on the 1st and 2nd of December. But we need to get through this race and figure out who is going to take out this round win. Supported by One Stop Car Wash Equipment on board there. The man with the van himself, Justin Lewis. How many pairs of sunglasses did you bring this weekend? A whole van full. Here it is though. Justin Barnes is going to start us out on the front row with Jack. 
Panacea alongside. Now, he got the move done on Justin Lewis in the dying moments of the last RXA Cup race. So he was pretty pumped, Justin Lewis, though, even in third position, because he had a really good battle with him. And that was fantastic to see further down. You see Ben Silvestro done really well in 12th position. Jamie Canellis. Mitch Brooks in 17th. First time driving the RXA Cup this weekend in one of the uh, amazing place in motorsport cars as well. So great to see him come and join the series. So many people getting involved. We need to watch for both of those drivers. If Payne's got first gear back, he's definitely going to lose out on the start. Now, he chose to go rear field, so there wasn't any implications throughout the race. Here we go. All supported by One Stop Car Wash equipment. We're underway. Standing start, and look at Panacea. Looks like he's going to try and go around the outside. Got a good start alongside Barnes, but it's a left-hander into Turn 1. Weber got a flyer as well, and there is the 82 of Payne. I reckon he is one of the ones to watch here. Oh, it just stepped sideways out on him off the race start through one. Tom Shaw alongside Lewis as well has done really well to get that in the third. Oh, no. And there it is. Glenn Gamble. The, the one-stop car wash equipment car itself. Glenn Gamble, unfortunately... Uh, looks like he is off the track. He has rejoined us, though. That is a, a good thing there. How good do some of these cars look under lights, especially when we get those bright coloured liveries, the yellows, the greens. They're making their way through the pack. Other than the dark sky behind that shot, you wouldn't think it was in, in the, at night time with how bright the lights are uh, here at Sydney Motorsport Park. Yeah. It really is a spectacular facility under lights. This yeah, is with Weber. It's Luke Weber getting the move. Oh! <laughs> Are we going to see the vibrant hand movements we normally see from Lewis? He's, he's too busy. It was like a Chinese of us, well, martial arts movie. Hand left, hand right. <laughs> Have they maybe missed the setup with the cooler conditions? Possibly. Very different to what they raced in last time they're out with the sun beating down on the bitumen. It'll be much cooler out there. But the LED is on for Barnes. We know he's out in front. Doesn't seem to be too phased by Tom Shaw. He's had a little bit of a look at the inside. Panacea must have missed a gear and made a mistake because he's got that race pace back and he is starting to claw Luke Webber back. Well, he's just PB to a 150.27. Webber's just done the fastest lap of the race at a 149.89. And Webber is fastest in the first sector. Shaw is fastest in the second sector. And Berryman's actually fastest in the third sector. And Berryman is up into that sixth and, position. And gone past Lewis now. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you love it when they just decelerate down here in the rotaries? Once they've warmed up and we get that sort of that flame come out the exhaust as they go down, the raw, unburnt fuel lights up. Fastest lap of the race, Payne now with a 149.38. He's actually got five tenths on Barnes's best lap. So Payne is definitely the fastest driver on track right now. Panacci has just got into the yeah, 49s with a 49.6, so he's coming back to the party. Yeah, and he's in the slipstream there too behind Weber. He'll try and rise in. It might not be the lap for him. He might try and set himself up for a run next lap. Oh, he pulls out a little bit here. He's got to watch out. Tom Shaw as well. They almost go three wide into turn two. Lewis has dropped all the way back, though. Well, he's Derwin got... Derwin behind him. He's got Derwin chasing him down now. And then you go back to the 27 of Noakes. Oh, here we go. Payne down the inside. We picked Weber, up. Weber, Shaw picked goes. Up. I'm going to put my nose in as well. Can't quite make it happen. Weber shuts him down. It's not all over, though, because if Weber's just lost a bit of drive here, Shaw might have a go. Panacea in the background just waiting for his moment to pounce. Like, he has really got some oh, pace. No, oh, 26. That, that Weber. That's Weber. What has happened there? The SCM Mechanicals. Mechanics. That's out of third. Because he had an issue with the car, because I can't see any spinning marks. He's trying <coughs> to start it. Do we have an engine issues? Tom Shaw will now go into third place. But you reckon Barnes has got uh, maybe just a little bit enough. of... He's got a little bit of upper yeah, sleeve, you reckon? He, he's in a rhythm. He's in a rhythm if he needs to. He... he you need to set yourself up for a lap here. You've got even horsepower. Payne put you three need to tenths. Him round. Payne put three tenths on him in the first sector. A little but bit but, sideways. But if he catches him, is he going to have enough to do the overtake yeah, maneuver? Yeah, catching him's one thing, and then it's going by him. Especially if the 44's got a little bit in reserve. Second sector, Barnes answered back and was two tenths quicker. So that gap's pretty stable. Again, Payne just can't quite get to Barnes. I think it's better over on the back side of the circuit and that mid-speed stuff. The gap down to point five. Final three corners to go through. Justin Barnes leading us out. Payne took a tenth out of him in the first sector. Barnes answered back and took a tenth out of him in the second sector. 
Head on to the straight, the one-stop car wash equipment. Round number five for the Yellow Express RX8 Cup Series. Game and over, Barnes will win Justin it. Barnes looks like he's going to get himself a race and a round, round win, win. Yeah, here at Sydney Motorsport win. Park. More importantly, a round win. And I think Penichi is pretty happy about the uh, the fourth place finish there as well. To, and Shaw with his best result, I'm pretty close to being his best result of the weekend. So it is Justin Barnes taking the victory from Brock Payne. Tom Shaw in third, Jack uh, Panacea in fourth. From Tim Berryman, Justin Lewis, Thomas Derwin, Jackson Noakes, Terrence Lewis, Terrence Lewis, Ben Shaw, complete your top ten. Yeah, Jamie Canellis will be there in 11th. Ben Silvestro in 12th, then it went back to Hill Scott. Mitch Brooks up for 15th. Great to see him in the series. Martin Lyle in 16th, then goes back to Grice Scott. Maisie Place in 19th. And John Freeland around out your 20. And Matty Power from the NT managing himself up a couple of positions. And it was Gamble who came off early there, had some issues, got back into the race. But Luke Webber stopped on that turn number six. Well, it's been building to this moment. Still to come, the final race in the TA2 Muscle Cup cars here at Sydney Motorsport Park. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back after this short break. Making the track up from Victoria again this weekend is Jackson Rice. Equal points with Josh Haynes. You young guys are really fighting it out in this series. Yeah, so look, very close championship, obviously, like round five here at, uh, at SMP. You know, the weather's fantastic, so hopefully it should be a good weekend. So, yeah, another two rounds. Um, and, uh, yeah, super close racing. I think this weekend the plan, obviously, just uh, keep chipping away. We just have to be inside that championship points, sort of ready to, to strike for colder. Um, and, yeah, we'll sort of just go from there. Very important weekend for you in this championship. Three months off, what's the preparation been like? Uh, massive, to be honest with you. Um, so, like, I've done a lot of stuff in the car. We've done a lot of um, testing sort of in, in the off-season with the, with the big break. Um, been in plenty of cars, like my personal life, doing lots of driver training, um, lots of gym work, a lot of, you know, health and fitness, just making sure that we stay at the top of our game. So when we come back to something like this, we can just be 101% from sort of the second that we step into the car. So, yeah. Sydney, like, we haven't done a lot of laps around here. We're lucky to do a bit of testing on Wednesday, and I think... The sort of the ultimate goal is just to, at a minimum, not drop any points to, uh, to Dylan and Josh, who are very fast, you know, sort of um, in and amongst us. You know, obviously, as you said, it's a very tight championship and then sort of make sure that we maintain those points. So when we go to Calder, I'll be lucky to get the, we do a lot of laps around Calder. We're very lucky that Dream Racing is, uh, is based out of there. So looking forward to that and, you know, going in with a bit of confidence and just making sure that we stay in the fight for this one. Talking about the team, you've got Brett and I'll come over from Western Australia this weekend. How does that help having two cars? Yeah, look, it's fantastic. Like, I haven't had a teammate all year, so it's fantastic. Like, someone like Brett to come over, be involved. You know, he's, he's got a plethora of knowledge. He's done a lot of stuff, a lot of racing worldwide. Um, so definitely to come in, you know, to, to have a teammate, to set up setups across two cars, you know, sort of broadens your range on stuff that you can test in one session, which then can, you know, sort of obviously lead to accelerating different setups and different stuff. So it's, it's a massive positive to have him involved in the team. Good luck this weekend. Awesome, kids, mate. Thank you. Jackson Rice clawing back that small lead that Dylan Thomas had in the championship coming into this race as he takes a checkered flag and gets himself a third race win. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. It is time, time to decide who is actually going to win this round. And if you're a betting man, it wouldn't necessarily be on King Alfonso the 13th there, uh, Christopher Formosa. Google it, you'll see it's an uncanny resemblance. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. A very uncanny resemblance. He's a character, isn't he, Christopher oh, Formosa? Yeah. We love having him in the field here. Absolutely, he adds a lot of colour to this uh, lineup. Speaking of colour, doesn't this place look absolutely mint? Wherever you might be watching from, because this is going to be a blitzing 15 lap affair. Poor old Graham. Yeah. yeah. That thing that was just, very unfortunate. It's actually parked about oh. 50 feet from our commentary position right now. It's sitting there looking very lonely and burnt rather badly. The good news is Graham's okay. Let's take a look at your lineup right now. Matty Cav, it's Jordan Cox and Tom Heyman on the front row. Then it's Dylan Thomas and Benjamin Grice, row number two. Josh Haynes and Josh Anderson, they'll be alongside each other in row three. Back to Brad Gardner. Zach LaShalpo for me could be one to watch out for. Jackson Rice and Hayden Jackson. So it's Jackson and 
Jackson provided the action. Nicholas Bates is out of 11. Josh Thomas, how about him on debut? Doing a good job is Brady's boy. Matt McAlden, hello, Helen. Hello, girls. Up there in the GC out of 13. Michael Coulter, hello to Steve Coulter and uh, Mama Coulter as well, tuned in on the side of the road in the caravan. Carl Girton, Brett Nile, good job, the West Aussie on debut. There was Christopher Formosa. Greg Keem in the De Beers refinish entry. Hello to little Leah, his beautiful daughter, who's a ninja star. She's a state champion ninja athlete now. Anthony Tenk and Paul Hadley in the IES Motorsport entry. And it's back to Elliot Cleary, John Hollinger, and of course our three that are not going to make it out for this final race. And I'm not sure about Hollinger either. We'll wait and see whether Johnny made it out there in the 23 car. Either way, three Hail Marys and pass the ammunition. Whether you're holding on tight in Panola or you're right here with us at Sydney Motorsport Park, we welcome you to a 15-lap bare-knuckle pub brawl. Get it, boys! Woo, Heyman, good start. It's a good start. Josh Hayes down the inside, trying to get on the inside of Dylan Thomas. Bryce around the outside and three. Lechapo as well, following alongside Haynes. They stay pretty much in the same format. Here we go. Big dive down the inside from Heyman early. He said he had to get the move done on Jordan Cox, but he holds on, Coxie. Oh, he runs wide a little. Oh, gee, good, good car control. Heyman oh, had a good look at him. On Nick on the back of Nick's baits there. That might have been Hayden Jackson gave him a little oh, nudge. Oh, that was Thomas. Zach Coulter gave him, give him a bit of a shove around the corner as well. Gee, we're on board right now with Gardner as all the family in Panola raise the great northern cans to the sky and see whether the little guy can hang on. Cox, your leader from Heyman. Dylan Thomas is actually back in fifth now. If Price can hold him, Haynes got by Dylan. That is critical in the championship side of things. Thomas holds sway. How about the wheel work on Gardner? It's like a chocolate wheel out there. Oh, Jackson Rice has actually got the move there done on Gartner as well. He's got a good start, moved up a couple of times. He's on the outside though. Lachapo and Gartner on the inside. And Anderson might follow him through here. Rice finds himself in a bad predicament. Ooh. Can he push his way back in? He does. Look at this. Rice and Gardner side by side at the moment. You got rough nuts on the side of the seven car, and a bloke has probably called that alongside him. They just squeeze back through. Rice manages to make it work. This triple one car. Josh Anderson and the temporary fence hire. TFH entry out of the riff. Doing a heck of a job. Now side by side. Cool. Dylan Thomas, the CXC Mustang, in fourth position, trying to hold out a hard-charging Benny Grice. He just covers him off a little bit as they come into turn number two, hard under brakes, right behind him, Le Schaupo, in the 21 Temper Solutions entry. It's Rice, right on the back of him with the number seven, Gartner behind him. Let's go to Stevie White in the pits right now. Hi guys, yes, I've got the Cole Girton car here. Obviously there's a mechanical issue there. I've got the Hayden Jackson car here right beside me that's got some gear selection issues. A couple of issues that they obviously haven't fallen for before. But yes, it's all happening down here and that the Cole Girton car looks like it'll be out. I'd say it's looking for a, a burner mechanical issue there. The guys are looking over, trying to turn it over now. It sounds like it's running, it's clearly got a miss in it. King of the Thank guns, Kylo, King of the guns. Here we go, down at turn one. Oh, Heyman, he had a look, just like his old man. He's got the Jenica right out on this one. A sailing champion, his dad, and his boy wants to sail right by the unbeaten so far. Jordan Cox, he's closer than he's ever been in the De Prinzio Concrete. Cal's Jr., number 30 car. Oh, Jordan Cox, all those words of encouragement on the side of the car <laughs> down there as well, aren't they? Josh Haynes just watching from behind. He's not close enough to do too much about this. Can he do it? Heyman has another look in the number 30 car. It's a fight here for the lead of this final race. 15 left. We're only a third of the way through. Who is going to make the mistake? That'll be the... And that's probably it. It's yeah. going to be a mistake. They're very evenly matched, aren't they? Great to have them out on the track. Oh, yeah once and it's exciting too maddie they're both young guys in fact when you throw hainsey into that as well it's three really good excitable promotable young men once again the 30 car ranges in behind the crutch of developments entry of jordan cox cox wants to take this thing back to the boss from france with a four peat win on the weekend Heyman just wants to get a w 
Listen to the boom every time the flames come out going through the gears in these muscle cars. Here we go, Gartner goes with the gears. Can he get under the back wing of Lachapo? Lachapo just seemed to get a better yeah, drive. He yeah. slid the car around the corner, Gartner. It's one oh, great vision on board, though, to see him really holding onto the steering wheel as they slide the car around one, hard on the brakes into two. He's not going to get it done on this one by the looks of it. Now we've got the glow. Oh, no, big dive down the inside. Lachapo oh. slowed down, but no, they can't get the drive. The boys will be going off in the lounge room right now. They're side by side over the crest. Can he get it done, Gartner? Can he hold on? Yes. The most unlikely looking race car driver on the planet, this guy. And I just love it because he's a wheel man. No doubt about it. And now he's driving on. Woo, boy. Josh Thomas, the temporary fence hire, TFH Mustang, goes all agricultural. Now, the margin. Let's have a look at what the gap is. 0.29 of a second. It's probably less than that into turn one. Heyman ranging up behind him. Oh, he's really putting it to her now. Lap 13 of 15. He's right there. What a race from these two youngsters. They have a different line through there, and that inside wheel out in the dirt won't help with the drive, but he's right there now behind Jordan Cox. How do they flow it through turns four and five here at Sydney Motorsport Park? Have a look at this. Tyres are starting to get hot. A bit of degradation. Whoa, they both take the rear out a little bit. They slide it out. Smooth, though, really, considering. The best person for this is Haynes. He's far enough back that if these two take each other out, he's going to have room to at least get around it. Because right now, it is coming down to the wire. We're almost on the two-lap-to-go mark. Who has got the best rubber left in the last couple? Heyman. I would think that Cox at this point has ripped away the rear vision mirror and gone, don't even look. Oh, he's really close now. This is a race. This is a race. Two and a bit laps to go. Cox and Heyman. And everybody on the edge of their seats here. Race four. The final round is at Calder Park. These guys aren't even in the championship battle, but who cares? It's a race for the ages up front. Well, we've still got plenty happening down through the field here as well, but the race for the lead. Jordan Cox just holding out Heyman. It's going to be another nail-biting moment as they go into turn number one. Oh, look at the car slide. He's right on the back. He comes down. No, he's not going to fight down the inside. Cox will cover him off anyway. Oh, it's going to happen. He goes man. midline through this turn number two, though, Cox. It's really gives him some drive, but now the car's <laughs> loose. He's really got to be gentle on that right foot as he presses it down to the firewall. Can't ignite or can't light the wheels up too much. They get too excited. I don't know. What do you he's do? Get the drive. What do you do? What do you do if you hate it? You've just got to send it, right? There's no championship contention situation here. Intimidate him until he makes a mistake. He's just going to have to send one down the inside. There's no other way. But you don't want him to make any contact. But he's got to give Jordan something to think, oh, what's he going to do next? Oh, look at the oversteer there. So good. Turn nine. He's looking so comfortable in a rear-wheel drive car, though, Jordan Cox. We, we know him, and that's what, what he's known for is all the front-wheel drive vehicles he builds and drives and, you know, his notoriety through the Very circuit smart. racing. Very smart. I mean, he said prepared well by the IES crew. Well, he was the one that actually test drove the IES cars yes. on Wednesday, not this car. Correct. The IES team have brought him in underneath this, this stable. Well, Matty Cav, there's one lap to go. It says Crutcher Developments down the side. It's Jordan Cox, though, behind the wheel. He's opened up a bit of ground on Heyman. Maybe Tommy has spent his last buck because I think now Cox, jeez, how good is he on this lap? He's just opened up the advantage to 0.7 of a second. It was 0.2 the previous lap. Well, has he been looking after the car? Who knows? He's very, <laughs> no, very good. Jordan Cox, he's yeah, a bit coy about what went on to. I'm sure if he takes this out and we talk to him later, he'll just, he'll play it down a little bit. His phone won't stop ringing, though, if he wins this. Oh, I'm sure of that. <laughs> Jackson Rice, meanwhile, has got himself up into fourth. We haven't really seen much of that. Haynes is second. Rice is fourth. Back to Josh Anderson. What a drive on debut. Up to fifth 
Benny Grice has been fantastic. Dylan Thomas, seventh. Zach LeShalpo, eighth. Nick Bates, ninth. Matt McKeldon, tenth. The two Master Series protagonists. Then you go back to Coulter. Good try from Hollinger. Josh Thomas, who went off the racetrack but got back out there. King Fonzie, Chris Famosa, up to 14th. Pete Robinson, 15th. Anthony, 10K. You then go back to Gillis, Cleary, Keem and Hadley. That's your top 20. And we are nearing the end. He's just driving away. That's just cruel. It's like he was playing with him. It's cruel, isn't <laughs> it? It is. It is, looks very cruel from our point of view, doesn't it? It's like he just said, said, all right, well, you've given me everything you possibly could. It's not enough. Mark Crutcher will be, will be pouring the champagne over his head somewhere in Marseille, France. What a job. Jordan Cox gets the job done. And the number four slows up to get the adulation of the crew. Well done, Heyman. He might not have got the win, but by gee, what a job he's done. Haynes, he throws the shucker out to Heyman. Haynes gets third, Rice. Then back to Anderson, that guy. Out of the riff. Took him 10 minutes to drive here from his bedroom. What a job he's done. Grice should get sixth. Well, they go back to Dylan Thomas, Zach LeShalpo, Nick Bates, Matt McKeldon, Michael Coulter, Johnny Hollinger back then to Josh Thomas, Chris Formosa, and Pete Robinson. Boy, that's... How did he do that? Well, he saved it all for the last lap, didn't he, Jordan Cox? Put on a show. Josh Haynes, great fight back from him after those incidents earlier in the weekend, which saw him go back to 17th in race number... Uh, one it was, and uh, make his way back over the races to get back into a, what is a podium finish in the end. That's great from Josh Haynes, and that'll help him in the championship. <laughs> Dylan Thomas going back. Now, Jordan Cox, he's got to celebrate. He's got a bit of SVG about him, doesn't he? He's got to bag it up. No doubt about that. Let's take a look at your final results. Jordan Cox will get the job done. Tom Heyman will pick up second. Josh Haynes will get third. Jackson Rice, Josh Ed. Josh Anderson will pick up fifth. Benjamin Rice will get sixth. Dylan Thomas will get seventh. Zach LeShalpo, eighth. Nicholas Bates, Matt McKeldon. Good job for Matty Mack. He wraps up a top 10. Michael Coulter will get 11th. John Hollinger picks up 12th. Josh Thomas is 13th. Chris Formosa, 14th. Peter Robinson got to 15th. Cody Gillis, been an up and down weekend for him, but he showed some speed along with teammate Elliot Cleary. Anthony Tenkay got to 18th. Greg Keem out of Canada. And the De Beers refinish entry, 19th. And Paul Hadley. That is your top 20 of what has been a fantastic weekend for the second last round of the TA2 Muscle Car Series framed by High Tech. Let's go down to Matty Cav, who's standing by with our podium. In third position here for round number five of the High Tech Oil Super Series in the TA2 Muscle Cars, framed by High Tech, still framing, gives Joel Gambino a little pat. Dylan Thomas, welcome, mate. Uh, you had a few issues with the car in that last race. Uh, yeah, no second gear. It was, um, I came out of three and it just went bucket of bolts and I went, DNF boys were out. Plucked third and the third was there and I went, all right, no second. So we did a 36 with no second gear, so I'm pretty stunned to, we were able to carry some good corner speed, which is just a shame. I mean, like, to do a 36 with no with no second gear, I mean, like, we, we were on for a good end of the race. We managed our tyres really well. Really big thanks to CXC Racing Crew. You know, all my boys did a great job. TB Motorsport for kicking me up the butt all weekend and just making sure the attitude was in the right place. And, um, yeah, all the family and friends that came out to watch. So, uh, on the call, let's bring it. It does leave you in the championship lead, though, going in the final round. Good. There we go, big smiley face. Let's get a trophy here from George Gambino. Oh, wow. Dylan Thomas, third for this round here of the High Tech Oil Super Series and the TO2 Muscle Cars. In second position, first time here in the TO2 Muscle Car Series, Tom Heyman, come over here. Look at the big smile on your face. Yeah, it was obviously a great race. A great race. We um, had a lot of speed. Obviously, not enough for Jordan, just quiet. But um, no, the, the guys gave me a great, great car all weekend. Um, got a lot of data going into our round in two weeks. So um, yeah, looking forward to it. Hopefully, we can get a good position. How did you define the battle with Jordan Cox? Oh, it was tough. Just trying to obviously no mistakes. Just keeping up with him. It was absolutely awesome. He's a great driver. Obviously, a lot of credit to him. So yeah, lot, lots learnt this weekend. So yeah. 
great result. Head over to George Gambino from High Tech Oils. They give you your trophy. Congratulations, Tom Heyman, second. And your winner for round number five of the TO2 Muscle Cars, presented by High Tech Steel, framing a clean sweep all weekend, Jordan Cox. Big round of applause, on ladies and gentlemen. Wow, mate, you got a huge smile, clean round. What is Crutch going to say? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully he says you're out, you're in for the rest of the year. So um, I can't thank him enough for giving me these opportunities. It's people like him in motorsport that uh, really give people like myself like a chance to, to showcase our skills. And, um, yeah, I can't thank him enough. I really appreciate it. So the IES motorsport crew did a great job running the car all weekend. It was fast. Um, it was a super interesting race, that last one. Like, I'm quick in places. Tom's quick in places. He's a really good steer. I was right on the limit. And um, I thoroughly enjoyed that last race, mate. Yeah. What is the best thing you like about these cars? Oh, you got to wheel them, man. My shoulders are sore. Like you got to, you know, the gear, the gearbox, the H pattern dog box. Like you got to wheel it. Like it's a proper car. So, uh, look, you know, it's not just one thing that makes the category. It's great people, great cars, well run. Um, yeah, it's, it's just good all around, good all around category, mate. Yeah, superb brand of racing. A clean sweep. George Gambino is going to give you a trophy, ladies and gentlemen. Your round winner, Jordan Cox, in the Mark Crutcher Crutcher Developments number four. Thank you, Matt. Well done to the teams here. That was a quick turnaround, too. From race three to race four, it was about an hour and a half, and that was a lot to do in a very, very short space of time. So well done to all the teams. A nice early finish for us, too. So I know that a few of us will get on to a couple of nice, quiet little ales and maybe relax and kick back with some of the TO2 family. We've had some amazing racing since pretty well Friday morning when a lot of the major sessions we're into play, and now we can wrap things up tonight. Let's head down to Matt and Stephen White, a.k.a. Vinnie Diesel, to wrap things up on what has been a wonderful weekend in Sydney. Boys, it's going to be epic at Calder Park. It is going to be absolutely epic when we go down to Calder Park for the final round, the 1st and 2nd of December. Steve's getting a fresh haircut for it as well. I am, I am getting a fresh haircut, but I'll tell you what, how, they just keep delivering this, this, this category, doesn't it? I mean, amazing. Under lights, how good, how beautiful, but... Look, fantastic to see what a great event. So, well done to everyone here. Jordan Cox, outstanding. And young Tom Heyman, obviously, who's come along. Nicholas Bates got up by one point. You know, the old, the old, the old ball brigade there uh, with Matt McKeldon. But, yeah, Dylan Thomas gaining those points and working with Tim Brook. Well done. Make sure you get onto the website, hitechoilsuperseries.au. The final round is coming your way in just six weeks' time at Calder Park Raceway down there in Melbourne, Victoria. We're going to do it the 1st and 2nd of December. We hope to see you there.